An accelerometer is a device that measures acceleration. They're used in engineering to measure vibration in cars, buildings, or machines. Really high-end accelerometers are even used in navigation. And most smartphones contain an accelerometer to keep the display upright when the screen is rotated. The effects of gravity on an object are indistinguishable from acceleration, which means that an accelerometer at rest on the surface of the Earth will measure a total acceleration of about 9.8 meters per second squared upwards, while an accelerometer in freefall will measure zero. Let's get started with the PikaDev 3-axis accelerometer. We'll walk through some examples to read acceleration, infer tilt angle using gravity, and even detect tapping and shaking. The PikaDev accelerometer is a three-axis device that measures acceleration separately in three orthogonal axes. The axes are labeled on the board as X, Y, and Z. This is the end of the arrow that's pointing straight out of the board. Each arrow indicates the direction of positive acceleration. There are two PikaDev connectors to allow daisy chain connections. The address switch, labeled ASW, allows you to select one of two addresses. For this tutorial, the ASW switch should be in the lower off position. For more experienced makers, there's also a solderable breakout that brings out two independent interrupts as well. And if at any point in the tutorial you have any uncertainty or some questions, you're not alone. If you're in a school, ask your teacher. If you're in a makerspace, then ask the makerspace coordinator. Otherwise, open a thread on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Time to build and code. Today I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, and this has an SD card already set up to work like a desktop computer using Raspberry Pi OS. Check the article if you need help getting started. Plug a PikaDev adapter for Raspberry Pi onto the GPIO header. On a Raspberry Pi 4, the Ethernet arrow will point towards the Ethernet connector. On a Pi 3B, the USB and Ethernet connectors are swapped. Connect a PikaDev cable to one of the ports on the Pi and connect the other end to your accelerometer. Again, make sure that the address switch, ASW, is off. And I'll connect a display, connect to a network, can't forget keyboard and mouse, and apply power. My Raspberry Pi is already set up to be used like a desktop computer and has the PikaDev drivers installed. See the article if you need help with that. We'll be working from the article in this guide a lot. If you're not already there, then find the link in the video description. Find the first example and copy that example code. I'm going to open up the programming menu and Thony IDE. Create a new file and paste that code in. And I'm going to save this to a PikaDev directory in my home Pi directory. I'll call this acceleration.py. Let's give the script a run. We can see some data streaming up the shell here. If I click the view and plotter option, we can see a plot of that data. And these are the three axes as being read from the accelerometer. Here we have the Z axis pointing straight up. So that's reading about 9.8 meters per second squared as we'd expect. Remember an accelerometer at rest on the surface of the earth ought to read about 9.8 meters per second squared upwards. If I tilt it so the Y axis points up, we can watch those lines cross. And now the Y axis is pointing directly up, reading about 10. And I'll turn it so that the X axis is pointing up. That's pretty cool. This is what happens if I shake it. It just goes crazy. I should be able to excite just the X axis by sliding it on the desk and the Y axis. You can see a little bit of cross coupling because no matter how hard I try, there's no way for me to perfectly excite just one of the axes. And there's the Z axis for completeness. Let's take a look at this code. We start by importing the device driver and we also import a sleep function to create a delay. We initialize the accelerometer and call it motion. So everywhere in this script where we see the word motion, we're referring to this accelerometer. Then we set the range property to two, and that's 2G. This is the maximum scale that the accelerometer is capable of reading, and it affects resolution. You could set it to two, four, eight, 
and 16g. In the infinite loop, we read the acceleration property that returns a tuple x, y, and z for acceleration in those directions. And so we apply those to some x, y, and z variables. We do a bit of rounding to round to two decimal places just to make this print look a bit nicer. And then we create a string. We have the x label and we concatenate that with data from the x axis and so on for the y and z axes. And then we just print that constructed string. Moving on to the next example from the article, we'll infer tilt angle from that acceleration data. Copy the next example, and I will open a new script, paste it in, and save that as angle.py. After the same setup procedure as in the last example, this time we're reading the angle property, which returns three angles about the x, y, and z axes. Here we're just printing the y angle, so tilt about the y axis. But what does that mean? Remembering from the right hand rule, we point our right hand thumb in the direction of positive y axis, and the direction our fingers curl should be the angle that we rotate for increasing angle. So I should get increasing angles rotating this way and decreasing angles rotating this way. Let's run the script and find out. We're level at about 90 degrees. And if I tilt this to the right, that's increasing an angle. And if I tilt it to the left, that's decreasing an angle. And if I go all the way around, then it wraps at 180 degrees. It wraps down to negative 180 degrees. And so of course we could change this to tilt in the x-axis. And now we have tilt in this axis. Interestingly, if I tilt it this way, then there's no change. I only get a response if I tilt it around the x-axis. Now I've just changed our printed parameter to the z angle, and we've actually got some nonsense printing here. Think about what it means to measure tilt about the z axis. Positive z is pointing straight up. And so we're measuring tilt as measured in this plane. And that doesn't really have meaning because gravity is going straight down. So to get meaningful data about the z axis, we actually need to flip the accelerometer up onto its edge. And now we can measure a meaningful angle. So in a nutshell, you can get data for three angles, but only two of them will ever make sense for a given orientation. We can detect tapping with this accelerometer, find the example for detecting a tap, and copy that example code into Thony, into a new script. I'll paste that and save it as tap.py. After the normal setup here, we call the setTap method. We pass it a one for the first argument for single taps, and there's a threshold argument that we can tune to set how strong the tapping needs to be before a tap event is registered. Then in the infinite loop, we query motion.tapped, which will return true or false. If the accelerometer detected a tap, we'll print a one, otherwise we'll print a zero. Let's take it for a spin. I'm printing all zeros, so there's no tapping detected. And if I knock the desk quite hard, we get a tap. And that's this threshold at play here. If I change this threshold to something like 10 and rerun the script, it should be a little more sensitive. There we go. You can see every time I tap the desk, we get a waveform in that plot. Cool. We can also detect double tapping by changing this type to a two, two for double tap. I'll increase this loop time a little bit to give us more time for that tapping. Now, no matter how hard I knock, we shouldn't get a single tap event. I'll have to knock twice to get that tap event. So one tap is rejected, but on a double tap, we get that one printed to the shell and we can see on our plotter that moment in time. While a tap is a short, sharp impulse, a shaking is a little more sustained, so we can differentiate between tapping and shaking. Copy that example for detecting shaking. 
And again, create a new file, paste it in, and I'll save this as shake.py. This time in the infinite loop, we're calling the shake method. And we're passing in a threshold here for how strong the shaking needs to be. This time, instead of printing a one or a zero, we're printing a message. If motion.shake returns true, then we'll print shaken. Otherwise, we'll print a blank line. Run the script. This is where it helps to have a long picadev cable. And if I shake this side to side, you can see we trigger a shake event. Importantly though, if I put it on the desk, a shake is different to a tap. Nice. Now it's possible to have two accelerometers connected to the same PicoDev bus. Here's my first accelerometer and it has the address switch in the off position. When I introduce my second accelerometer, it will need to have its address switch in the on position so that they can be uniquely addressed. This will allow us to read data from each device independently. Here's the code for reading from two accelerometers. We have the normal import statements, and this time when we initialize accelerometer A, we initialize it with the argument ASW equals zero. This is our first accelerometer with the address switch off or zero. Then when we initialize accelerometer B, we initialize it with ASW equals one because its address switch is on. Now we have two accelerometer instances that we can read the acceleration property of. Here we're reading accelerometer A dot acceleration into X A, Y A, Z A. And here we're reading acceleration from accelerometer B and we're storing that result in XB, YB and ZB. Just to keep things clean, we're just printing the X acceleration independently from each accelerometer. So if we run that example, both accelerometers are at about zero, but if I tip accelerometer A to point downwards, we should see one of those lines go to negative 10. And if I point accelerometer B to point upwards, we should see the other accelerometer climbs to positive 10. And so we can see I'm reading data in from two independent accelerometers. And so we can see these are pretty versatile devices, accelerometers. Not only can we measure linear acceleration, but we can use that data to infer things like tilt angle or shaking or tapping. From here, you can make all sorts of useful projects like a digital spirit level that can indicate if something is sitting level, or maybe even a locked box that only opens when you knock on it in the right sequence. If you have some questions or just want to share something cool that you've made using the PikaDev 3-axis accelerometer, then let us know in the comments below. Until next time, happy making. Thank you.